I've been skating for almost 20 years and I've been skating with Sky for almost 10. So in this compartment we have all the power here. It pops up and reveals a TV. People ask all the time, how do I get up here? To be honest, if I'm in the mood, I run over and jump on the bed. Hi, I'm Jonathan. Let's take a tour. Welcome to my living room. The main thing I wanted to focus on, especially the bus entrance, is to make it feel as wide as possible. So, we have a couch here in my per sky. This is one of our favorite spots, but this couch is set up in different ways. We're in couch mode right now. It also pulls out a little bit to make more of a daybed. It also opens up more parachutes, but also in this middle section the cushions disappear. The table pops up, you have a dining area. And when you're traveling I just feel like that's the setup I have most of the time, so I have a nice place to work. In front of the couch, this is my standing workspace and my entertainment center. Right here this pops up and reveals a TV, but I needed it hidden. Otherwise I'd be sitting here and I'd be doing almost nothing besides watching TV. I like this standing workspace. 1. Because the windows are here, 2. Because it's built this high for a reason and 3. I have plenty of room to put stuff and take up space while I'm working. You'll also notice that there's quite a bit of overhead space here. We did a ceiling lift, a 20 inch ceiling lift. So, there's plenty of room here, even with the beams I won't touch the ceiling unless I try. Ah, uh, the energy in here, the decorations and all that. That might be one of my favorite parts of the build that makes my space feel like home, special. When I travel mostly alone and with the sky, there are a lot of other people that I care about here and in a lot of other places as well. I was originally going to put another window here. M, but to be honest, I wouldn't have the wall space to hang the art that I've collected and curate the vibe that you see. I kept my skateboards here, at least when the bus is not moving, because it's quick and easy to grab. And also with Sky's bed here a reminder of our stuff because it's what he loves to do the most. Definitely one of my feelings. I've been skiing for almost 20 years and I've been skiing with Sky for almost 10. Behind the tiny wood stove you have this tile that does a really good job of pushing the heat into the bus. Behind that you have the mortar and cement board that do a really good job, neutralizing the heat and keeping it all in this corner. Even when this burns almost every day in the winter. I don't get a lot of heat on the other side of this wall, which is where my pantry is, AR, Sky's food, the fridge, but the way this chimney is built is specifically to push the heat into the bus and neutralize it in the back spaces. Ah, this is one of my favorite parts of the bus because I love to cook and because I love to cook, I made very few compromises in the kitchen. The appliances are all apartment sized, like you would find in a house. Instead of 30 wide, they are 24 wide. This appliance set is free of charge and I love it. I needed the gas stove. So, this is the only thing in the bus that runs on propane, the stove and the oven. Upstairs I have the matching microwave, some cookbooks up there, and a nice deep sink. All of the cabinets, both top and bottom, were built by Custom Codwood working in Henders, North Carolina. They are all soft closing, which really helps them stay closed while driving. They also have little bumpers and magnets that help them stay closed even more. So, these black countertops you see are quartz from an American company called Cambria. You can throw hot stuff on it, the material is basically indestructible. And I also like the black contrast with the rest of the space. So this is where all the food lives. I have the freezer and fridge full. I think it's 28 cm CIC but it's all part of the same fridge derrier set. My pantry also has a self-closing feature which helps keep things closed and there's a beam on this one below as well. And this one below is almost exclusively for Skype. 
when considering the weight of this side of the bus we wanted to offset it by putting the full fridge and freezer here and the small wood stove here which is very heavy and also this entertainment center. When designing the interior layout the main thing was not so much the overall weight but the weight balance. I worked with LookCandidDate.com for almost everything. I moved to Hendersonville, NC in late 2019. He helped me get this bus from B-School Buses in North Florida in early 2020 and then we brought it to their shop in Hendersonville. The bus itself I believe cost $7,000 at BGASQES. It's a 37 flatbed school bus, Bluebird TS2000 with a Cummins 59 transmission and Allison. The total cost of the build working with LucasSchoolu.com Y and Custom Cut Working and Gomez Holstery in St. Louis was about $175 million. I'm so grateful for the time, energy, resources and help that went into bringing this to life. From the angle you're looking at it, the bathroom vanity is green to match the kitchen. Same Cambria quartz countertops. And this type of sealed concrete sink I got from a lady at Etsy and I love it. It's like a nice pop of color in here. It kind of breaks up the color scheme you find everywhere. And this mirror is also a medicine cabinet that hides at least the toiletries I regularly use. This is the separate compost toilet with the urine diverter. I know people who talk about nature's heads are some of the other options and they said their least favorite part is dealing with that liquid container. So I really like having a urine diverter that goes directly into my gray tank and also the solid compost bin. It has a fan that runs 24-7 and vents to the outside. So I really don't smell anything. I usually use peat moss or sawdust for compost and I prefer the sawdust. It's a little harder to find sometimes because I like the smell of wood a lot more than poop and I feel like it smells a little more like poop with the peat moss. I love the shower, I use it quite often. The Nevia by Moen showerhead makes this possible because the average showerhead uses 3 to cco gallons per minute. This one I think uses 1.4 gallons per minute and it still gives really nice pressure and I mean the spa showerhead experience that they sell you is very real. There are two different types of tiles in the shower and I really like the way it turned out. You've got large format tile on these walls and you've got an irregular pattern of small format tile on the side wall. You'll also notice that the ceiling is different in the shower and bathroom than in the rest of the bus. There are no beams here for a couple of reasons. 1. You lose headroom with those beams. And two, you already lose a little bit of headroom in this area because the shower sits above the wheel well, which does a couple of things. One, it hides the wheel well nicely. Second, it creates some room to have a good sized shower. This is a standard 4x3 shower pan that you can buy at Lowe or Home Depot. And lastly, the shower curtain, if you want to call it a curtain. It's actually the Nautilus retractable RV door. The translucent kind of ones. It closes and uh it's also self-cleaning this little part. As the water runs off and drains it runs into the drain, which is a really nice feature. It's like 2015 and I'm a college student watching a show on HGTV about tiny houses and there's a young couple showing off their bus and that was the first time it occurred to me that this was something that could be done, although I couldn't let it go. I wrote about it, I journaled about it, I drew about it. I had these lists of what my hypothetical bus, house, would look and feel like, where I could take it and what it was capable of, I just couldn't let go of that idea. I was hyper obsessed with it until 2019 when I decided that I was either going crazy, or I was going to do something about it and I bought a bus. I moved in the summer of 2022 so I've been living there full time for two years now. There's something so powerful about bringing this idea. This thing that just exists in your mind and materializing it into something that's real. In the end it was worth it the ways that it has changed my life, the ways that it has changed your life, the ways that it has opened up our world to all of these people and places and experiences that we might never have crossed paths with if it weren't for this.
Ah, oh, welcome to my bedroom. I have a queen-sized mattress here. It's pretty high, as you can see, it's like chest height. People ask all the time, how do I get up here? To be honest, if I'm in the mood, I run and jump into bed. But I have a ladder here that makes getting in and out of bed super easy. The platform that it's sitting on is lined with cocoa fiber so it doesn't hold a lot of moisture. Uh, I know there's a few different ways to do that. But I feel like cocoa fiber has been working really well for me and it's aesthetically pleasing as well. And under the bed I have tons of storage space. There are three drawers of the dresser. Right here, I have a big shoe rack here in the middle and then another three drawers on the other side. So a total of six drawers and a large shoe rack. And I actually have a full closet and two other drawers right here. So in this bay we have all the power. 10,000 amps of battery storage. Six Victron 200 amp batteries are wired in series in parallel and then a 5K inverter to go along with it. There's 100W of solar on the roof. In the event that I'm running out of power, keep in mind that these are lithium batteries so I can run them down to almost zero. Hmm, but in the event that I'm running out of power, I'll book a KOA for the night or roll out to a campground and plug it in. But this system is pretty robust for the panels that I have. It powers everything that I have just fine. And it's rare that I run both air conditioners simultaneously, but when I do I feel like I'm consuming about 10 to 12% of my battery per hour. You've got all the fuses, relays, switches, you've got your breaker box, just like you would have in a house. You've got the solar charge controller and all the components that make the system on the roof talk to the system in this box. This is the floor heating system. From Rickson, which is really just a tiny little engine, it runs diesel heat. There's a separate exhaust that runs underneath that runs the floor heat, the diesel hot water, and also the redundant engine block heater and a very important system for me in the winter. Welcome to the roof. I hang out here all the time. I'm standing on the TRX composite deck. I think of it like a dock. This thing holds up really well. M. It's all sitting on an extruded aluminum railing system from a company called 8020 and that 8020 railing system is attached by skull.com swivel feet from end to end. Those air conditioners that we talked about pop up over here. They're kind of boxed in by the 8020 system. My max air fan that sits between the bathroom and the shower and here on the floor. My little fireplace from the wood heater. It's currently capped for the summer, but it's normally the tallest part of my bus. When I put the winter cap on it's almost 13 feet. And that's a roof. One of the things that I feel has really had an impact on me, on the way I travel, is the beautiful grounds and public spaces that I can park in. When I hit the road for the first time in 2022, it was very intentional. It's fine. If I'm going to actively recreate and use these public lands, I want to give back. So my work and the events that I've frequented and the sponsors that support me, we've planted over 2,000 trees with the National First Foundation. And my goal before this chapter of life is over, is to plant at least 10,000 trees. Mental health is also something that's very important to me, even down to the name of my coaching and consulting business. Keep going. It's a very simple message, but it came from a very scary place as a child. I had several moments where I just didn't want to be here anymore. That weird, restless kid, feeling very alone, even in circumstances where I was surrounded by people who cared about me. And even during the bus construction and getting through COVID and everything that came with that, there were several instances where I may not have been here. And I think in the fall of 2021 I got, keep going, tattooed on my left wrist as a permanent note to myself. And it had been a mantra in my journals for a long time and still is. But I've come to appreciate it so much because it's forced me to grow and evolve, and be conscious of how I take up space and the impact I leave, and the footprint that follows me wherever I go. And I look forward to all the ways it will test me and encourage me to keep evolving in the future. 
Thank you Tiny Home Tours for introducing me and my home to the road. If you want to see more of the bus, check out Home on the Highway on Instagram or homehighway.com. It's Home on the Y and if you want to see more of me, my life, or my business, check out jonathanperera.com Jonathan Pereira on Instagram. It's J-O-L-A-T-H-A-N-P-E-R-E-R-A. -E -E Thanks for watching.